So, what is going on guys? Welcome back to yet another video here on the Freak Flyers YouTube channel. And today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Canopy Anatomy. So it's going to be kind of a continuation of our uh, Canopy tier list video. But instead of, you know, actually speaking about different types of canopies, we're going to understand what each component of a canopy is, how it can differ. Because if you understand how a canopy is built, it's much easier for you to know what to look for when looking for a canopy. Or when a new canopy comes out or another canopy that you don't know, you find out about it. You know what it's going to be all about once you figure out what each feature uh, entails. So skydiving canopies have evolved a lot over the years. Um, and then, uh, you know, they have many different ways, names, sizes, materials, shapes, etc. And of course, it's, it's understandably hard for a beginner, uh, and even someone experienced to fully understand what they have, what they want or what they need. Uh, so in this video, um, I'm going to try to explain a little bit of that. Do keep in mind that it's a lot of information, so I can't cover everything, but I'm going to try, um, and go through the top layer of, of each category. Uh, so without further ado, don't forget guys, like, subscribe, etc. And uh, let's actually start. So a canopy is usually constructed out of two main materials, which are the lines and the fabric. There are other things, of course, like the tapes, uh, but since most of them are standard, uh, we will not cover those you know, separate things. Uh, so let's actually start with the lines. Uh, they are the simplest part to explain, even though they can have a lot of variations. Your canopy has a whole bunch of lines that not only attach you to it, but also hold the canopy's shape. These lines are cut in a very specific way that make the canopy have a sloped shape. And as it's pulled towards the ground, it will have a glide ratio designated mainly by the lines. But the canopy's shape is also designed to fit the lines. Hence why it's not possible to properly change a canopy's trim without redesigning the whole thing. A flat gliding canopy will have a flatter trim and a shorter recovery arc as a consequence. A steeper trimmed canopy will have the opposite. It's been accepted by the community that everyone benefits from more range, and you can always fly a fast canopy slow, but you can, you can only fly a slow canopy slow. These flatter glides, however, have a purpose, of course. They're commonly found in student canopies and beginner canopies as well. As for the line material itself, there have been and still are various materials used, but I'll only mention the main ones, so sorry for all the Kevlar fanboys, I'll not go into those, you know, old school weirder lines. There are three big types of lines used modernly, and I will not get into to them too much, but here's the gist of it. So let's start with plastic lines. Plastic lines tend to last a very long time. In fact, I have yet to see one break from wear. Their drawback, however, is that plastic shrinks when heated and the slider heats up the lines as it's rushing down them. They are more commonly used in big canopies where although noticeable, after enough time, it's easier to deal with the line shrinking and going out of trim. Keep in mind, the outside lines are exposed to more friction, so it's not a perfect line shrinking. It's more on the outside lines near the stabilizers, so it will affect the openings and performance of the canopy. Your brain actually gets used to it, but it's very, very obvious once you reline as the canopy will go back in normal trim and you'll feel a difference. It might also start giving you cutaways if you really take it, you know, to the extreme of not changing your lines. Some names for these lines you might be familiar with are Spectra, or the more common name, uh, Microline. Moving on to the high, to the Aramid lines, the, the, the fiber lines, they are my favorite. Uh, they are also, you know, a great alternative if you have a smaller canopy to the plastic lines. The, the, these these uh, fiber fibrous lines are thinner, lighter, they tend not to change trim and perform great uh, for their for the, the weight versus um, actual dimensions of the line. They're nearly perfect, but because of their anatomy, it's harder to tell when they need replacement. Some of them, at least. What happens is small pieces of dirt get into the mesh uh, of the lines uh, and lodge themselves amidst the fibers, especially in sandy environments. During the next few openings, of course, the lines will stretch a little bit, uh, and compress the sand crystals into the mesh of the fibers and they will create like microscopic cuts that of course will add up and reduce greatly the line's strength. Also, if the line has twists uh, for some reason, uh, as the slider is rushing down, it will you know, compress the sharp fibers against each other and the line will actually damage it, actually damages itself. It's a great line for smaller canopies uh, that I of course usually use more by more experienced jumpers who will jump a canopy a lot 
have their own canopy, keep tra track of the jumps on each line set. And of course, the more experience you have, the more uh, cautious you are where the, the, you land, where the canopy is set down, how do you pick up your canopy, removing twists on the lines, inspecting them periodically, etc. Some examples are uh, HMA, High Mesh Aramid or Technora, which is awesome, the thinnest line, uh, pound for pound. Uh, but it's harder to tell when it needs changing. And we also have the best and most popular line, of course, currently used, which is Vectran. It's great, and I really can't think of any downsides. The last type of line we can talk about is, is Dacron, which is absolutely awesome. It's very durable. It's a slightly elastic, which helps on the openings, uh, especially for students, as it can very lightly compensate for your body position. And it can also save your neck if, you, if you've got an absolute slammer of an opening. It's going to uh, help you a little bit like people using uh, big cameras and whatnot. The downside of Dacron is that the, the pack volume and the, the actual line volume is absolutely huge. It's, the, it's, it's almost rope. I wouldn't even call it line. So moving on to the fabric used. The most significant number to evaluate uh, a canopy's line, nylon quality or whatever is the porosity. Porosity is, you know, how many pores something has, how many holes. There are a few different types of fabrics used in main canopies. I will cover the most important ones, of course. FLN11 is, you know, the standard fabric that has been used for years and it was, was always used, not as much now. It's got a, a little bit of porosity. It's not too high, but it's, it's got some porosity. It's measured in CFM. I don't exactly know the, the, the number, but it's, it's just a little bit. It's, it's, it's drastic, of course, compared to today's fabrics, but it was the, normal, the norm a few years ago. It will have, of course, less performance due to the fabric having a harder time trapping the air in the canopy's shape, as the air can just fly through the, the pores of the fabric. It's awesome for openings, though, as the porosity, uh, the, 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 the fabric can breathe, basically, as it's opening. So any imperfection will not be as noticeable as the airflow can go through the, the pores and, um, you know, like, be a little bit of a, a cushioning of the opening instead of it being so hard. This is why it's, you know, so popular on reserves. It's going to give you... Uh, better openings and of course although the le landings themselves are not so comfortable due to the fact that some air is lost in the porosity so it doesn't keep the canopy in the shape that it needs in the pressurization that it needs to create lift for the flare uh, this is one of the reasons why it's important to reset respect yourself of course and have an adequate reserve size as it's harder and less comfortable to land and manufacturers of course quickly noticed that f111 could be better if it had no porosity so after a few coatings of silicone the canopies pores are all filled and the fabric becomes zero porosity fabric or ZP as we, we know it. This fabric is great for main canopies as it makes the canopy very responsive to inputs and have better performance and range, especially felt when flaring. It's not used in reserves as it, as it makes the openings more sensitive, but on main canopies, of course, we have longer snivels and the canopies themselves are desi designed to open as greatly and as comfortably as possible. Also, of course, the silicone coatings wouldn't be ideal for canopies that remain packed for long times, uh, maybe in, even in the heat of a car or the sun, for instance, like a reserve will suffer. The downside of ZP is that as it ages, of course, the silicone coating will be washed away, basically, with openings and pack shops, and the canopy will gain porosity. Of course, it will lose some of its performance and behave closer to F111 after a few thousand jumps as the coating gets worn off. Finally, there's silk fabric, which is a thicker, more rigid than normal fabric. It gives the canopy a better performance and more rigidity and sensitivity, which is great for high-performance canopies. The downsides, however, are that it packs much larger than the ZP, and the fabric loses its performance much faster than ZP. A ZP canopy will have you know, noticeable wear after a few thousand jumps, whereas a sail canopy will have noticeable wear after a few hundred jumps. Finally, there are some low pack volume or low bulk versions of F111 and ZP. Each manufacturer has their own. You know, they tend to pack lighter and smaller, perform about the same, but they last less time, you know. Of course, thinner fabric is more sensitive to wear. There's also low, bo low bulk versions of sail fabric, which is what Petra's, you know, modern Petra's use, I believe. It packs a little smaller and lasts a little longer from my personal experience than the original fabric. For instance, that was used on the original Petra's and the, the original JVX full sails. As it, I think, you know, it was directly borrowed from other sports like sailing or sail flying or paragliding, I don't know. It was directly borrowed. So it, it was not designed for uh, pack volume and, you know, it wasn't designed for resisting opening frictions and everything. It's why, it, you know, it, it, it downgrades a lot faster. And I definitely felt that on the canopies that I have, that original fabric. Uh, so, you know, the manufacturers have upgraded the fabric and they work great now. 
And there are also hybrid construction canopies that you combine two different materials. For instance, there are some canopies that combine ZP with F111. Maybe when pack volume is important or if it's a slower canopy that you know doesn't need to, to have such great pressurization performance, like student canopy, for instance. Uh, and there's also canopies that combine ZP and cell fabric. And of course, this is all going to depend on the end goal, if it's to lower the pack volume, if it's to increase performance, etc., etc., etc. Now, we all learn what each canopy's part is named. And if you want to review that, just open your AFF ground school book. Simply put, we've got top skin, we've got bottom skin, and they're connected by ribs. The lines attach to the bottom skin, and in between each line column, we have a cell. Some canopies have five lines on each riser, meaning they have nine cells, while other canopies have four lines on each riser, meaning seven cells. The seven versus nine cell debate can go on and on forever, uh, but simply put, a nine cell canopy will have a higher aspect ratio, therefore it will fly and flare a little bit better. Openings can be harder to manage, as a longer and thinner canopy can be harder to control during the opening. Seven cell canopies have a lower aspect ratio, therefore they have a little bit less performance and sensitivity, but do open more consistently. I say more consistently because so much effort has been put into nine cell openings that nine cell canopies have for sure the best, most, most comfortable opening. But if some small problem occurs, a, the more sensitive nine cell will worsen it much more. This is not the case with the seven cell as it gives you consistent openings. And this is not to say, you know, good because some nine cell openings can be uncomfortable, but consistent on having and less prone to issues. Hence why they're used in reserves, wingsuit, and base jumping canopies. This, however, goes all down the drain when you add cross braces to the mix. Normal canopies have each cell divided into two parts, making it a bi-chamber design, which you know works great for normal canopies, but high-performance canopies have extra braces on the inside next to the ribs that go across diagonally each chamber, uh, hence the name cross braces. These canopies are made to feel rigid and fly fast, and when a canopy is small, you need it to to fly fast, to use all the air around it as well as possible to create lift and perform well. The added rigidity helps tremendously in performance, just like sail fabric. And when, when both technologies are combined, sail fabric and cross braces, it creates really great canopies. All of this extra rigidity, performance and sensitivity creates high performance landings as well as high performance openings. Hence why it's a canopy only for experienced jumpers. Finally, the canopy's shape. Canopies have always been two re rectangles stitched together with ribs, so creating a pretty rectangular shape, and obviously rectangles aren't super aerodynamic, so manufacturers are starting to add curves and elliptical shapes to canopies, leaving the rectangular canopy designs for beginner canopies and reserves. These elliptical canopies received upgrades from time to time, creating still simple but evolved elliptical designs recommended for advanced to professional canopy pilots. Until the 2010s, even the most high-performance canopies were nothing more than rectangular canopies with rounded edges and cross braces, but manu uh, until manufacturers starting to realize that a triangle isn't the best flying tool. So instead of evolving uh, new canopies from old designs by adding the, the technology we learned, like the, the cross braces, the rigidity of the fabric, etc., manufacturers have to start, are, are actually started to design shapes that were meant to fly and then adapt them to be a parachute, adding... Well, you know, making them be able to open and any the, te the technology that was, you know, that was available at the time. This new shape of canopies with a rounded le leading edge uses something that is called the Schumann platform. Great for performance, but more sensitive on flight and, of course, on opening. The best knowledge was used to turn the perfect canopy shape into a parachute. So, of course, we use, like we mentioned above, the nine cell design, of course, full sail fabric, cross bracelet, everything we knew and we had access to, we used it. This created canopies that have that had a shape so efficient at generating lift that we could go to sizes smaller and teams and trim steeper than ever before, because the canopy could handle all the speed and turn all of that speed into lift efficiently. These canopies were so fast that other canopies had to be created to fill in a gap from rectangular cross braced canopies to the Schumann platform. If we think about it, we have a nine cell sail canopy with a crazy shape that we want to slow down. We can use our previously learned knowledge to do so. Reduce the aspect ratio, making it a 7 cell, and giving it normal zero porosity fabric. This created our beloved 7 cell hyper performance canopies, which are the little baby versions of their 9 cell full sail hyper wings counterparts. So what does this tell us about the future? We're starting to understand more and more how to make a canopy open better, and just like in every other field of development, the flagship features will trickle down to the more beginner-focused wings. 
The Schumann platform, combined with each wing's features, will help build a canopy adequate for each experience level that will improve each canopy's just enough. It will not make the canopy faster, rather it will improve higher end canopies in terms of performance and it will improve lower end canopies in terms of comfort and ease of flight. So keep your eyes peeled for the first, you know, beginner Schumann platform canopies, as they are, of course, coming. That's been it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. I do remind you that um, there's much more to talk to about in each topic. Uh, and if you want an in-depth video about each part of, of, of this video, please comment and let me know in the comments. If you have any questions or complimentary information, let, them, let me know in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys next time.